Good morning, everyone. We have can... Julie here this time, Saturday morning. Hi, I'm <laughs> filling in. I can never <laughs> find the right place to wave. I should just point at the camera. It's like, I know where it is. <laughs> it always ends up over here where nobody can see it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Julie and I this morning as Mags is doing a presentation and Mindy is doing other genealogy stuff for her DAR meeting. So Julie's filling in so I wouldn't be all alone. <laughs> Hi, Sarah's mom. I see you out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Tommy and Chris and Kay and Thomas. And Stephen Tomazowicz. I just like saying his last name. So I know. <laughs> he was at Friday date night last night, too. Oh. So, yeah. I say last night when really I mean yesterday afternoon for me. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I can't really make it because I'm still I know. kind of at work. <laughs> I know. You just need to take every other Friday off, Sarah. Yeah, that would time. really. <laughs> I need to no. leave. Yeah, I have to go <laughs> join a video with my friends. <laughs> then we have Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Betsy. I think she was at Friday date night, too. Probably. For the first time. June? Yeah. I'm sure June probably was. Mm -hmm. She was. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a crew. bit about Friday date night, Julie? Sure. Thanks yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, we just get together every other Friday and we work on finding dates for the many thousands of profiles that don't have dates. They're lonely and they're sad and they need your company. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing this since the beginning of November. And uh, I usually, po I always post about it in G2G to give you the link to the free space page that has instructions and um, hints and tips. And, uh, we have cleared almost 10,000 profiles. So we've dated 10,000 profiles? We have. Ah, look, okay. there's Magnus from Sweden. Hello. And we also yeah. had Hillary pop in. Cool. Magnus has done a lot of research on my Swedish people. So I, I'm indebted to him. And he sent me some pictures yesterday. And I haven't had a chance to even look at them or talk to him <laughs> yet. So yeah. thank you, Magnus. <laughs> So yeah, Friday date night has been really beneficial to Wiki Tree. So and it's a lot yeah. of fun. Mm -hmm. We had a new participant yesterday, um, Katie, and she got into the Discord channel. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe I didn't know this was here. This is awesome. <laughs> She's very excited. So mm -hmm. Yeah, because it helps us, you know, if people are searching for those ancestors, the dates on there really helps to differentiate one person from another. So. It does. And it also helps to track down duplicates because you know mm -hmm. there's got to be duplicates for at least some mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. How many yeah. how many are how many are actually undated still on Wiki Tree? Oh, do you gosh. have a do you have a number I, kinda? kind of? I could give you some yeah, there's like I'm afraid to say, but let me go pull it up. <laughs> but dating Ten thousand profiles in four months is pretty impressive. Uh, it is. It's and that is not taking into account. We had a bug in the system that was allowing all zeros to be entered mm. or GEDCOMs to import profiles without dates, and that has now been fixed. Okay. So we have been making a lot more progress since that's been fixed. So that's mm -hmm. fantastic. So let's see if I go look yeah, here. So Tommy and Kay, Tommy says 32,000. Kay was saying about half a million. Yeah, that's so there's still There's still a lot to go. <laughs> yeah. <There's laughs> but this a, yeah. With this effort of Friday date night, just kind of getting a pinpoint, you know, motivating people to get those just imagine if so 10,000 in four months, we'll probably just go up from there. Yeah, Maybe every we'll do... week we bring in new people, um, more people are participating. And, and of course the, the profile improvement project works on those and mm -hmm. the data doctors mm -hmm. work on those too. So we've got yeah. coming at it from all different directions. Mm -hmm. Get those, get those, take those lonely profiles. Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> I feel it's very gratifying to go out there. I, I just fall, right down into that rabbit hole. <laughs> mm -hmm. And usually I'm sure a lot of times it's really easy to find the date. It just happened that when they uploaded the GEDCOM or something, just didn't have date. 
Yep. Well, and I know sometimes find... it's an, even in the biography, like it's yes. just yes. transfer into the yep. proper field. Right. And sometimes you get in there and you, you know, you start working on one and you find out that all the family members that are connected don't have dates. So you can find those. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you find one census listing, a lot of times you can fill in the dates and then it just kind of blossoms from there and you can find family members that haven't been connected to the correct family yet. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Big, big snowball. Tommy's saying that probably in two to three years, maybe we'll have every single profile with a date. Wouldn't that be fantastic? It could happen. Mm. At least an estimated date, one or the other, mm -hmm. a birth or a death estimated yeah. date. Definitely, I can see that. Oh, and we have our annual clean a thon, and that helps oh, with those two. Coming up next Yay. weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Where Julie, you'll see Julie and I pretty much every four hours for the most part. <laughs> yes. Yes, Julie's so excited. <laughs> I love the thons, but by the end of the weekend, I just don't want to look at Wiki Tree anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I need to take a day off. <laughs> so we also had Benjamin join us. Hi, Ben. I hope he goes by Ben. That mm -hmm. was an assumption. I would I would think so. It's it's midnight for him right now. He's an Australian. I know. I know. He comes to Friday date night too. Well, what in time the morning. is it for him at four PM? Oh, it was like, it's early morning, I think. Oh. I think he's 15 hours, 14, something like that. From, where, from my time zone, anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, we have, Julie wants to share with us our question of the week. I do. Here, <laughs> I'm going to do that now. I'm adding it to the stream. There we go. See, I did this. Woo! Aren't you proud of me? Yay. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm teachable. <laughs> so our question of the week was do you have any artists in your family tree so i started digging into this last night we have a lot of members with artists in their tree and it was very interesting and as i am well known my name should be alice because whenever i go into anything like this i just <laughs> go in head first <laughs> so i started digging around and there's just so much here it's hard to kind of narrow it down to talk to you guys about it but our first poster was melanie paul and she had um a third cousin that was an artist who did like china painting um and i couldn't i don't think i was able to find any pictures of her work i don't recall oh yes there there it was that's the one that had the so it's we're not using this for commercial purposes, <laughs> but it's a beautiful piece of, of um, ceramic work with lovely painting on it. So that was pretty cool. Um, let's see, go back. Can you see that tab that no, I just brought up? No. Oh, mm -mm. the figures. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I know better. I know better than that. Okay, we'll just go down the ones that have pictures here. <laughs> So then we got down to Mia Fournier and her um, cousin, her mother's cousin, still living, um, does more, what do we call this? Abstract? It's not really abstract. It's They say it's magical realist, like realism. Like magical fantasy. Realism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is just beautiful. Um, I couldn't believe the, let me blow that up there for you. Isn't it gorgeous? That is, I like that a lot. It's very detailed. Mm -hmm. I love that. Very poignant. <clears throat> and then we got down here. Todd Stanton was talking about his first cousin, Benjamin West. And I should have shared my whole screen. Can I still do that, Sarah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, you can probably you can probably undo it and then redo it. So stop the screen and then reshare yeah. the whole. Yeah. And while we're doing that. I can show my, I didn't post it there, but my grandma, she did paintings. So that's what one of her paintings <gasps> that my grandmother did. Cool. Mm -hmm. So share that with everybody. And also, I am also an artist as well. A Are you really? portrait I did of myself. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> 
Yeah, actually, I actually went to school for art. I oh well, I knew you were a graphic artist. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I do dabble in all the fields. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. I'm sharing my whole window, so I should be able to go. Oh to no, any we're gonna tab. see us. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's gonna That's do okay. that that infinite mirror thing, right? Um, so we'll I'll add that here. Hello, <laughs> it's us duplicated. Or twice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are talking about Todd Stanton's uh, cousin, who was born in the 1700s. I might add. So um, Benjamin West was a, um, I looked at so many of these that I'm getting, they're all running together in my head. He did some amazing artwork and is featured in the Gutenberg and um, other um, museums. This is what happens when I multitask. <laughs> uh, this is why, this is why, uh, Mags is so much better at this than I am. So that was <laughs> that was an interesting little stopover. And then what I also found interesting is that he has a personal connection to a man named Jim Moon that that Todd knew personally. Um, he died last year, two years ago, um, and was a very well known artist in North Carolina. And I think there was. I thought that I had found there was a entry for him somewhere that had information about his um, artwork, but I, sorry, that, yeah, I'm so <laughs> Max, don't ever leave us again. <laughs> You're doing great, Julie. Yes. Okay. okay, so we get down to Frank Gill, who's, grandfather's sister so his great aunt Clara Louise Bell was an artist and I did find some really beautiful representations of what she did she was she did miniature paintings of people and this oh, was one that she did back in 1925 that took a first prize is like that gorgeous that. I know mm. it's so beautiful so detailed and she did, this was tiny this was like a I can't remember what the dimensions were, but like smaller than an index card, I believe. Oh, really? Wow. I know. Can you imagine? Mm. So that's that was gorgeous. And then there was one other example too of Francine Serrano that his his great aunt did. Look at that. Wow. Again, tiny, like postage stamp, but bigger it's than a like postage this, stamp. Like but yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and the detail on it is just outstanding it just blew me away so let's see who else did we have um mark weinheimer weinheimer has a um both of his parents were artists and his ninth great grandfather which they're not absolutely positive was an artist in the netherlands um i didn't have time to pull up a whole lot of his stuff but there was Here he is. Oh, here. Yes. He, look at that. Can you see that? No, it didn't pull up. It didn't? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because it popped into a different yeah. window. Oh, gosh. Chrome. He did some amazing oil paintings with great detail. And if you go to his profile, you can mm -hmm. find a gallery of what he's done. And Frank has, or um, Mark has some very, talented ancestors no wonder his family is artistic still um dorothy o'hare talked about her third great grandfather who was a silversmith mm. she has she has a representation of his work here he, he made this and it but like a shows spoon? it's a ladle and it's ladle. got his artist's mark on the back mm. and then she had That's a picture cool of the scroll work that was on it too. Find that. I hope I'm not making anybody dizzy. <laughs> oh. So he did all this too. He was pretty well known for his work back in the day. That's cool. Yeah. 
He lived, <clears throat> when did he live? He was in the 1800s in Virginia and down into Tennessee where he spent his lifetime. And let's see who else. Frank had some more people, but he did not link us. So we're going to go by that. <laughs> that looks um, like a dragon in this next one. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the photo Nick on the next one. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So let's see this one. Oh, I thought it was amusing. Joyce Vander Bogart is related to the guy. Oh, this is this. Harvey Ball, who the is the, the creator of the smiley face. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And there he is. Did that pop up? Yes, it did. So there he it is did. with all yeah. his smiley face stuff. I thought that was fantastic. I love Which smiley I, faces. I know. Well, of course, Todd and I both had to add that to our replies. <laughs> And then Alexis Nelson, who is an artist herself. Ooh, is that her? Is that her yeah. stuff? Yes. <gasps> Alexis. Yes, is that, that is gorgeous? beautiful. And she kind of cut herself short here. She doesn't. She said she did not like, it, like she loved to paint, but then she never felt like they were good enough, so she'd go back and keep touching them up. <laughs> so I do that. I I understand. I get that. <laughs> but I think she does beautiful work. So uh, we're gonna just that, give her like, the kudos. Did she say what it is. It's like a. A it's a northern pike, yes, going oh, after a butterfly. butterfly. That's really cool. I know. I thought it was outstanding. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and very realistic. Mm -hmm. But she's also related to Norman Rockwell. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's kind of an exciting thing. Seventh Cousins. And down here we have Thomas Caneline, well, who is... I was going to say, I thought he would be. His father was a collage artist. So wow. he would take like whatever materials he could find and he would make whatever he could out of them. Um, actually, That's I think awesome. this is his grandfather. Thomas, maybe you can clarify since you're watching. Yes, please clarify. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, this is uh, this is his grandfather. So <laughs> I really appreciated this. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. This looks like something I would make, but <laughs> <laughs> but he's much more creative about it than I ever could be. I thought it was a lot of fun. And then he also talked about um, his Norwegian side of the family, and his grandmother was an artist and created uh, certain types of paintings that I thought was. Let me see if I can find an example because I thought it was really interesting that we've kind of gone back to that type of painting. Oh, where did I put it? Rosemoling, Rosamoling, I can't say it. Um, I wanted to show you an example because does it, doesn't this look like, like some of the, you know, the adult coloring books that like Joanna mm. Basford has put out, doesn't that look like something she would draw? So it's almost like that has come full circle and gone back mm -hmm. to us yeah, it seems to. like trends always, it's also fashion, you know, trends mm -hmm. kind of circle. Yeah. I don't know if you're watching the chat, Julie, but everybody's sharing different smiley faces right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so that was a little cool trip into uh, Scandinavian Art, art with Thomas's post there. And it was fun. So, so Thomas said, my father's currently a collage artist and that that's a photo of my grandfather who passed away last November. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, about that, I'm sorry. He looks like a really fun guy to be mm -hmm. around. So we're sorry that he's gone. Hopefully he's finding all kinds of fun things to make art from in the, in the next iteration <laughs> of <Yeah>. his life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see. Dieter has Dieter Lurens, who is a very active participant in the WikiTree Challenge right now. One of his paternal ancestors um, is was a ar very well-known artist. Here's his Wikipedia article. He's from Germany, of course. Um, I, I assume this is a self, yeah self-portrait. And I believe that he's uh, celebrated in Germany and well known for his um, works there. He's he to me he had kind of a stark, um, a little bit of a dark style. 
Hmm. Like, like maybe he, maybe he went through some rough times in his life and this is how he expressed himself. So I thought hmm. that was kind of cool. And then we're getting down. There was one that I really wanted to get to. I'm sorry. I feel like this is taking a long time. Oh, no, I'm sure everybody loves looking at the photos. Okay, of good. The beautiful art. Okay. Well, oh, Janet Gunn had some interesting links in her. She, um, let's see. It was her great aunt, Wendy Wood, and her primary profession, as well as being a rabid Scots nationalist, she says. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and Wendy owns a couple of her paintings. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. And I that's have cool. saved off. Here's her profile with her family. Somebody's done a beautiful job on Wendy's profile. She lived in England and Scotland. And then, um, there was an example of her art here, of course, of should I do you want to attempt the pronunciation of this bridge? Which one? The Ponte bridge of oh, Dolce Aqua near Bor. What well, is Italian? So near Borghiera. Mm -hmm. how's, how is that? We have Chris in here. Who can help I know. Us. I know. I saw also, he was out there. And then this is her father is was also an artist, the same woman's father, which I love pencil drawings. I thought that was really beautiful. I guess he would do pencil drawings and he did sculpture. So, um, and this was the one that kind of took my breath away. So C Handy was related to Joel Reeves, who um, was an artist that, was part of a, I guess we'll call it a movement called the Ashcan School. And the Ashcan School was um, a group of artists in the in New York that would do realistic uh, paintings of like the, the poorer sections of New York. Well, he was part of that group of artists, but he was down south. So he would focus his artwork in the south. Um, but he also designed these beautiful stained glass windows for this chapel in um, Georgia, which, oh, oh my gosh, L -l let's, we have to go look at this because it was just incredible. This is a, um, this chapel is a wedding destination. And I started looking at pictures of it and I got lost. And so I didn't get to much of the rest <laughs> of the thread. But look at this chapel. Is that the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? That is really pretty. It was beautiful. And the, the, her, um, M C Handy's great uncle designed these windows in here. Where is that located? Georgia? It's in I'm Georgia. It's like Red Hop skipping a jump from me. I know. You should go hiking and visit because this this whole area around here just looks beautiful. So that, you know, what an honor to be related to somebody with that kind of talent. That was just gorgeous. And let's see. We do have a profile for Joel Reeves, but it looks like he could use a little TLC here. If somebody wanted to do some additional work on that or if C Handy's probably been busy with other stuff that <laughs> can't imagine. Let's see, what else do we have going on here? That one kind of stopped me in my tracks. That, that, uh, that one photo is really pretty. Down here? Yes. Yes. I get distracted is, by photos. I know. Me too. <laughs> So this was um, Carolyn Cummings, and this is her grandfather's painting. And he was not, she said he painted all the time, um, but he wasn't famous. These were things that were hanging in her family's home, and she just remembers these being there from her childhood, and I think she might have them in, in her home now. But isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I appreciate. Oh, I really like can, that one. I know, That's me really too. Beautiful. I appreciate people who can create things like this. I, it's not my forte. 
Oh, what else? Eve has a famous uncle who was a sculptor. I don't recall. She doesn't have any pictures of his work on here yet, but I wish that she would add some Eve if you're if you're listening. She's in the Netherlands, so she might be busy doing other Saturday things right now. And then we have Chris, who shared a picture that his grandfather did. Great grandfather. His grandfather painted it. Oh, but it is of his great grandfather oh, and his so great grandfather. Great grandfather. Yeah, that's really nice. Isn't that cool? I love it. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. Yeah, I love the lighting and everything. It's just very, uh, you kind of get a feel for the whole room there. It's awesome. And then Stephen, I know, is here, and his mother was a painter. Mm. So, Stephen, we should, you should share some pictures for yeah, us. Yeah, he said he should have shared some pictures. You still can, Stephen. You can still post a photo to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yes, please do. Um, Yelena Xdot is related to some very famous um, Renaissance painters, uh, Lucas Cranach, the younger and the elder. And I went and took a look at their Wikipedia article and had some representations of their work. I mean, this is incredible. This is, uh -huh. they, they were apparently very well known. So he and his father, he was an apprentice with his father and apparently his older brother was like the, the guy, the up and coming artist instead of him. And then his older brother suddenly died and then he started getting more training from his father and he did some incredible paintings. I won't go mm -hmm. through all of them, but he's very well known in the Renaissance period. So that was, that's pretty terrific. Elena, we have mm -hmm. some, very exciting connections on wiki tree mm -hmm. so i don't do you want me to go through more um i had another one to show actually oh good and then we could and then karen gave me an opportunity to show my store here i'll remove mine <laughs> i'm sorry what karen also gave me the an opportunity to show everybody the wiki tree store where they can get a shirt oh, where you good. Where, like you okay so the sources next I'm going to, I'm going to show, this is my great, great grandfather's brother. Mm -hmm. He was, it was him. And I think I've talked about them before. They're, his dad remarried after his mom died and left my great, great, my great, great grandfather and his brother who was deaf in Pennsylvania while they went to Kentucky. And then the brother who was deaf ended up becoming a lithographer. And this is one of the <gasps> things he created for the school. He worked for this school as a lithographer. And this is one of the things oh, he created. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I yeah. said, I have this thing for like pencil sketches and, and pencil drawings. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, this is a profile. I probably should write a biography and maybe include all that stuff. <laughs> what have you been doing, Sarah? Do you have nothing else to do? I, I, I know. <laughs> and so let's go look. Let's see if I can quickly find the Wiki Tree store from the Wiki Tree challenge page. Ooh. I think Chris has, I think you can. Is that picture? Click. So on the Wiki Tree challenge page, help. You can scroll down. And if you click this link, it should take you to the Wiki Tree store. Or then you can buy a shirt. And you can choose whatever color you want. Like Julie has black. I chose green. I have V-neck. Orange. V-neck versus crew neck. You get to be Yeah, they have it in different size. They have it in different. Um, you can get it. You can get a bag. You can get a sticker. You can get a pillow. You can get a tapestry like I do. I was going to say. <laughs> You can get a whole bunch of different. Get, look, you can get a fanny pack, man. Get a fanny <gasps> pack. They're all the rage. Put all, your, put all your genealogy pencils and stuff when you go to the. Get a pink, a pink fanny pack. Yes. That, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Spotify is flashing. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
You can't oh, well. listen to Spotify and do the live cast at the same no, time. No, I'm not listening to anything. Okay. Uh, so that is how if you wanted to buy any, and it's not just this one, you can get any. Can we get that as a tattoo? You can get it as a sticker. <laughs> we should and, do temporary tattoos for Roots Tech some year. <laughs> well, all, all of Wikitree logos are, you know, you can use them. So if you did really want to get a tattoo, you can. You were allowed to. No need to worry about copyrights. For that. Oh, I love the coffee mug. Click on the coffee mug. That's my favorite design. The American what? I'm thinking yeah. about getting a bumper sticker of that. Oh, good idea. I have mm -hmm. two of the t-shirts. I love those. Mm -hmm. So Chris Chris designed that logo. I don't know if everybody knows that, but yeah, he designed that Chris. logo. And that is a, his representation of his dog. Mm -hmm. so. So Fine. yeah, we got a lot of different stuff on the store. Now, one time I spent 20 minutes going through the store, guys, so let's not do that this time. <laughs> that was during one of the thons. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not go through the store. Sarah can spend a lot of time on the store. Well, she had a long shopping list after that little yes, I did. foray and into I did the store. End up, my mom saw that and got me in tapestry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Thank <awesome>. you, mom. <laughs> so... We have all of our profiles of the week, which, because if you guys didn't know, you probably know Prince Philip passed away last week, the age of 99, the Queen's husband. So we featured a whole bunch of different royalty from around the globe, not just England. We have some other ones too. So it's really varied. <clears throat> so we'll start with Prince Philip himself. He was born in Greece in 1921 and died two months before his 100th birthday. He was the longest living monarch consort in history. His uncle, Constantine, was forced to abdicate his father, Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark, and was banished from Greece for life. He married Princess Elizabeth, who was his third cousin in 1947. So the queen and her husband were third cousins. <laughs> so that is Prince Philip. A lot of photos. Okay, next cool. on our list, Prince Consort Henrik of Denmark was born in France in 1934. He married Princess Margaret, Margaret of Denmark in 1967 and became Prince Consort of Denmark in 1972. And he died in 2018. Julie is a, uh, let's, let's mute Julie well. <laughs> She's doing stuff. So next on our list, we have Princess Grace of Monaco. She was very beautiful for one photo. She was born in Philadelphia in 1929, a famous actress of the 50s, winning an Oscar in 1954. And she married Prince Rainer, Rainier? Rainier, Rainier. Yeah. the third of Monaco in 1956, when she became a princess. And she died in a car accident in Monaco in 1982. So oh she was born in the United States and then became a princess. Like everybody's dream. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that anymore. No, no. Yes. <laughs> Used to be everybody's dream. Right. Uh, you know, marry a prince. Sure. <laughs> sure. Or glass sure. slippers. <laughs> so next we have, okay, bear with me. <laughs> Queen Salote Ma Mafile O Pilo. Okay, I'm just going to stop. Oh, oh. gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm just going to butcher all of that. So, <laughs> she was Queen of Tonga from 1918 to her death in 1965. She reigned for nearly 48 years, longer than any other Tongan monarch. And she was, and then she was died in New Zealand in 1965. And she attended the Queen, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth in 1953. Cool. Very cool. Oh, look how regal she is. 
Next, we have Queen of Hawaii, Queen Lilo Kalani. Kalani? <laughs> so, if anybody wants to help me pronounce any of these things, I would very much appreciate it. I'll give it. You want me to give it a try? Please, less. Yes, please. <laughs> They're used to me butchering things like this. It's all same. <laughs> Liliu Loloku Walania Kamaka Eha Kapa'a Let's call her Lily. Can we call Lily. her Lily? Queen Queen of Hawaii. Let's call her Lydia. They call her Lydia. Queen of oh, Hawaii. Okay. <clears throat> so she was born in the Kingdom of Hawaii in 1838 and died what later became the US territory of Hawaii in 1917. She was the sovereign and only queen regent of the Kingdom of Hawaii. She ascended to the throne in 1891 until over, till the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom by the Coalition of American Businessmen, led by Stanford Dole. On January 17th, 1893, on Janu that's when, and the, compos the composer of Aloha Oe and numerous other works, she wrote her autobiography, Hawaii Story, by Hawaii's queen during her imprisonment following the coup. Oh my goodness. Wow. She was a very cool lady, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably pretty tough. Had mm -hmm. to be. Okay, so the next one is also pretty cool. Another queen. Another one that I'm probably gonna butcher, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Te Atarangi. <laughs> I know. Uh, it doesn't come naturally for us no. English speakers. We're very so, sorry. So she was a, Ma a Maori queen um, known from the birth as Piki. She was born in New Zealand on the Waikato River Banks on July 23rd, 1931. And she married... The second time for love. Uh, she had seven children and she died in New Zealand in 2006. Wow. And I think she was the longest reigning Maori ruler, I think. The, I think she oh, was really? the longest reign when I was reading about it. Um, I think that either the longest reigning queen or the long, longest reigning regent. I'm not, I don't remember, but very cool. Okay, then we have King from Thailand, King Bum Ibol of Thailand. Born in Massachusetts in oh, 1927. Really? Yeah. I think maybe his parents were probably just in Massachusetts in the United States when he was born. His uncle was the King of Raman. His uncle was King Raman the Seventh. And um, he, this bummy bull, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right, was crowned king of Thailand from 1946 to 2016 when he passed away. He was the ninth monarch of the Chakri dynasty and thus had the official title of King Rama IX. From wow. 1987, he was known as King Bumbul the Great and he died in Thailand. Wow. Very cool. Okay, we have two two more. A lot of, I think we have a lot of interesting monarchs. A lot of interesting royal people this week. Yeah. So next we have Prince Klaus of the Netherlands. He was born in Germany in 1926. And he was a member of such Nazi youth organizations. And you know, he was involved in that, unfortunately. <laughs> In March of 1945, he became a soldier in the German 90th Panzer Grandier Division in Italy. Before taking part in any fighting, he was taken as prisoner of war by the American forces at Meran. In 1964, he met Princess Beatrix of the Netherlands and became the Queen's Consort in 1980 until his death in 2002. There were many protests during the wedding due to his service as a German soldier and part of the Hitler Youth. But. Completely understandable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have one more. 
King Dan Sobieski or King John III of Poland. So he was born in Poland in, nine, in 1629. And John III planned to occupy Prussia with the Swedish cooperation and his French support. Popular among his popular among his subjects, he was able he was an able military commander, most famous for the victory over the Turks in 1683, the Battle of Vienna. Following his victories over the Ottoman Empire, the Ottomans named him Lion of Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein. And he was held as a savior of European Christendom by the Pope. King the wow. Third, King John the Third, Sobieski was the last great king of Poland, died in Poland on June 17, 1696. His wife Marie Kazimir died in 1716 in her in France and her body was returned to Poland. That was our he last royal of the of the morning. He is my he's my closest connection for all of those royal. I don't know what's which one is yours. Mine. So I'm actually hold on. Let's look. So I'm actually directly. I only checked Prince Philip, but I'm actually um, blood related to Prince Philip. <laughs> That's so it looks amazing. like my closest one. It's a tie between the Queen of Hawaii and Prince Philip. Let's see how. I'm 24 degrees from the Queen of Hawaii. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the Prince Philip. Oh, I should have just. I'm 24 degrees from, but I'm actually his. Hold on a second. It's going to take a little bit to load to think about it. <laughs> Thinking about everybody it? else is out there checking their connections at the yeah, same check, time. Yeah, check. Tell me, <laughs> Thomas. Fifteen they're, they're cousins, four about... times removed from Prince <gasps> Philip. Wow, I am royalty, guys. You are. We need to get you a tiara. <laughs> <laughs> Something besides, or some gems to add to your orange head. Oh yes, you yeah. need to add little. So it's like orange little, I'll be the Or little bodily you know, things. The, the princess of Wiki Tree. Yeah. <laughs> princess Sarah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to the photos now. I wonder if anybody was judging me on any of my pronunciations. They were very kind. They were very kind. I mean, there were some, that. you know, there were some difficult names that, you know, if I were to take, if I, I probably could pronounce them if I, if I took a little bit of time, but. It's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but I do so, appreciate learning the proper pronunciations and if anybody can yes. help out ever, so. Okay, so our photo theme of the week is generations. So we're probably gonna see a lot of generational photos, multiple, multiple generations in the same photo. I love those. Such, such as this one. This one looks like a four generation photo. This one looks Can you like zoom in on it? Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, that baby is so happy too. My mom is saying we should all study the international phonetic alphabet. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> it would it would help. What is yeah. the um there's another language that's supposed to be quite universal besides English, but I can't, it's escaping me at the moment. Oh man. They started talking about IPA over here, which yeah, I, I know I saw that in Indian pale ale, but I don't think that's what they meant. No, I think it's the international <laughs> phonetic alphabet. Oh, okay. Well that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This is why we don't do Friday date night in the morning. <laughs> I'm not <afraid. laughs> But so Thomas was saying that pie and IPA sounds like a great combo. <laughs> oh, look, Thomas was being very nice, saying that there's no reason to judge me for not knowing how to pronounce things. Aw. Thank you, Thomas. Yes, Thomas, please do put up the transcript. Oh, yes, I would course. love that. Yes, please. I'm just going to sit here and drink the rest of my coffee while you're talking. Esperanto, okay. that is the word that escaped me. Thank you, Anne. Ah. Got a lot of uh, like family reunions. Oh, look at that. Look at that. 
<clears throat> oh, and some kind soul put all the names on the picture. You should also, they should all be tagged right here. They should, yes. <laughs> I wonder if they'll come to go through my box of pictures and put all the names on them. I like this. This is four generation photo two. I like that one. Yeah, that's cool. I love old pictures. Mm -hmm. This is also four generations. Is it just four? I guess yeah, so. I think it's probably the, yeah. the, the kids the are great all grandma, the, the grandma, the mom, and then her three kids. Wow. That looks like. That's a great picture. I love it. And we have <gasps> Helen Van Vlit with her granddaughter Adele and some of her great granddaughters. Three generations. Amy, Alice, and Christine. So cute. <laughs> House of Grant Lawson. This looks like there's a few generations in this photo. It does. At least, at least three. Mm -hmm. You got a baby and then we'll say a grandpa. Mm -hmm. So at least three generations. I love the jaunty hats in this picture. Mm -hmm. They've all got them just right. Very stylish. A four gen another four generation one. Look at that long baby dress. I know. I love that. Does anybody and know what those know. are called? If there's like an official name for these baby dresses. Well, it could be their christening gown. Oh, maybe. And we don't know if that's a boy or a girl. Because well, we probably, maybe we can sell by the then. youngest. Maybe, is she the youngest? Nine, eight, nineties. I think Helen is the youngest. So I think it's a girl. Could be. They did not dress children according to their gender back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah, my did we have this discussion was, before? Yeah, and my grandfather was there's pictures of him in dresses. <laughs> my mom's dad <laughs> when he was young. It was a um, thing. Three generations. That's a cute one. Look at all the yeah. all the girls are in matching outfits. And yeah, their plaid skirts. skirts. That's cute. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to school. Could be. Four generations. Oh. Let's see if we can find a five minutes. See if someone uploaded a five generation one. The Eaton family. Mm -hmm. I run into Eaton's all the time because I think they're connected to my. Look, I was like, folks. what my wish and my command. But ah. I five generations. Wow. Wow. That's great. I thought the two in the back might have been twins, but I think it's mother and daughter, isn't mm -hmm. it? And then obviously her baby. Mm -hmm. And then the great grandma. And then the great great grandma. <gasps> you don't see that very often. Grandma, great grandma, great great grandma. <laughs> and that is a tiny baby there. That is a very mm -hmm. young child. I wonder the age gaps between all of them. It's probably like 20 years, maybe. 20 years, yeah, years between probably each of them. close to that. We all, our, our society has kind of ruined that possibility because we all wait so long to have kids now. <laughs> Christening party. Aw, that's cute. What a treasure trove to find something like that when you're doing genealogy. Mm -hmm. Four generations. So pretty. Well, Betsy. Betsy is probably still in here. Oh, wow. What a clan. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of people in there. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. But How many generations is that, Betsy? Is that three generations or just, or maybe looks like there's grandparents and then the parents and then kids. She says still here. <laughs> <laughs> three. Three generations. Three. Yeah. So. Family celebration. That's a neat one. I like it when they have these in their homes. I love seeing mm -hmm. what the. Like the. Um, like, you know, somebody got up and wanted to take a photo. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot more often these days, but back then it was because the camera wasn't as 
common in the, right. the home. Took, took an effort to get everything set up. Holding her great granddaughter. Wow. Here's a comment from Betsy about that picture of her large family. It was taken on the occasion of her dad leaving Taiwan mm -hmm. for the U.S. Oh. oh, I bet that was a little bittersweet then. Mm -hmm. Three generations. Does this look like it was mashed together? Or is that just yes. me? No, I think that's Photoshopping. Mm -hmm. But it's that's a so very cool. good job of Photoshopping. <laughs> they did an excellent job. I like job. that. They all yeah. kind of have similar noses. Kind of. Yeah, there's definitely Looks a family similar, resemblance. Very similar. Their eyes. Eyes, uh -huh. too. Who is that? Who posted that? Herman Hartenthaler. That's Hartenthaler? awesome. Definitely family resemblance there. Uh, where is this? Uh, Oberostrike? Oh, Oberostrike? I don't know where that is. Germany. Germany? Mm -hmm. No, last time I said Germany and it wasn't Germany. <laughs> Eight. Thomas, I think Thomas told me last time where it was. I think last oh, time it was Austria. It is Austria. Austria. Yeah, I didn't see the. I the was going Eight. based on the language. Yeah, that's what I did the right. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, okay. <laughs> Chris put a pronunciation guide on his WikiTree profile. Which that is, is a good, good idea. Everybody messes up his name. Four generations. Oh, look at that. That's a nice one. I love their hair. Mm hmm. So cute. I know how to roll my R's, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's in your DNA, isn't it? Mm, yes. Berriolo. Oh, that's a cool one. So you have to wonder, is that their home? Did the photographer come to their home or did mm. they go to a studio? Hmm. That's a good question. Robert Daniel Turnage. 1917, this photo was taken. Wow. I'm not going to open that PDF. <laughs> <laughs> so we have mother, daughter, and granddaughter. Aww. And a great voice. Yeah. So four generations in this photo. Little baby. Mm -hmm. Four generations of. Well, that's much more yeah. recent. Shocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shocked. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give anything a try. You know me. The Hornsby family. Multi-generational photos. So probably four generations here. I really need to take more time to add my photos because I have bunches like this. I wish I would have mm -hmm. gotten them posted. Yeah, I always every week I'm like, okay, I'm going to post a photo. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole bunch here sitting on my desk. I know. I that's, have, just, I've actually, that's a generational one right there. Yeah. I might have to share one of mine just to be selfish. But <laughs> I, I have some on my family on here, and I never share them because it's just too much going on. That's a nice one. Look, that guy has a pipe. Let me, let me see. <laughs> he looks like a sailor. He looks like Popeye. Yes, he does. Papa Sailor Man. <laughs> this looks like a four generation one. Well, I have a two generation one that I could share. So it looks like the older you are, the more of a beard you have, more facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it migrates from the top to the chin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of funny how that oh my works. Gosh. Yeah. You lose the hair on your head, but then that is a lot of a lot of people. Nineteen twelve. This is that a family reunion picture or something? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Mark Hurt family. That's awesome. Pennsylvania. Nineteen twelve. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, oh. Another another big one. Another Pennsylvania. 
We're probably related to them, Sarah. Maybe. We both have ancestors from Pennsylvania and discovered that, what, we're 12th cousins? Is that what I said? Chris is qu making quotes of what I say. The older you are, the more beard you have. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, five, another five generation one. Wow. That just doesn't happen anymore. Look at that baby so happy. Yeah, I think because people wait a little longer to have kids now. Yeah. So. Is that another one? Mm, another five, five generations. generations. I ask you if you ask, you shall receive. Yes. Okay. Just have to scroll far enough. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. Looks like a maybe four generation one. Aww. Got the grandma and then her kids and then their kids. At her last Christmas. Oh. Cool that they were able to memorialize that. Mm -hmm. So that was the last of our photos. Fantastic. A lot of good photos. And I see they were also talking more about pronunciation. They're still looking. going on about pronunciation. <laughs> That's cool. Pronunciation is very interesting. And how I started to take this free online class about um, phonet not phonetics, but like more like language and how they work and how the different sounds and how your mouth makes them and stuff. So it's pretty cool. I love language. I, I mm -hmm. have a really couple podcasts that I listen to, but it's more about the. Um, etymology of words instead of mm -hmm. I think that was, that was also the word that I was looking for oh <laughs> linguist linguistics too linguistics yes yeah mm -hmm. there's a good podcast called away with words and they talk about like where different phrases come from and mm -hmm. how to pronounce them and what the true meaning is and all that it's really interesting mm -hmm. so so Thomas says linguistics is a major part of his life outside of genealogy. <laughs> it's okay. I love learning stuff. So Me too. Okay. Well, for a quick, I know usually Wendy gives us a quick little update about the Wikitree Challenge. Julie, do you have anything quick? We, I, uh, no. We don't, I, we don't really like to I reveal wanna, anything. Right. I don't want to spoil anything. But so. I know we've broken some brick walls. I usually like mm -hmm. to, let's see, I'm gonna, we, just to say we have 20 bounty points so far. <gasps> just, just a, just a teaser. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay. There's That's a it. lot of time left there. Those people just dive in at, on Wednesday night after the live mm -hmm. cast, dive right in and get to work. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. So and Karen, well, Karen is Karen our is captain this week. Yes. Karen does not have any. Karen does actually have any points. <gasps> She's probably been too busy answering I know, organizing the background. Yes. <laughs> Making sure everybody has what they need. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, just quick, the Week True Challenge. Each week we take on a different genealogy guest star. Like this week we're working on uh, sh Sherry Passe. Passe? Did I say that right? Yes. Passy. Passy. Mm -hmm. And so we take their three and our team members are the team. Like Karen's team is currently working on Sherry's tree to make it more accurate and complete breaking brick walls. And, hope, and on Wednesday, Sherry will come on again and we will reveal to her what we found. I know she's so excited. If you didn't see last Wednesday's, you should go and, and watch she is, it. And she is, um, she does the Genia, Genia Friends. Um, I, I was going to say podcast, but it's more of a video cast, right? It was MVP week one, so she's sharing the podium. <laughs> Fair, good, good. You know, some some weeks we have some changes on who's top five. So, 
So with that, so yeah, Wednesday we will have our wrap up for Sherry's week and it should be really exciting. And we don't have anybody for the following week because next weekend is our clean a thon where Yay. we will clean our tree and it just helps with our overall year of accuracy. And if you're not registered yet, you have until Wednesday evening US time to get out there and get registered. And so join, don't join the tree nuts. No, join the tree nuts. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Join the tree nuts. Or the, or the cornbread catchers. Yes, or the cornbread catchers. I am, while well, I have been neglecting in my captainly duties, thankfully Debbie has been on it. <laughs> Well, uh, I have recruited Robin Shawls to go out and she's been handling all of our recruitment and mm -hmm. organization. She's been a godsend for me this, this time. It's been really busy. So she's awesome. Oh yes. And Karen is on tree nuts too. So mm -hmm. yes, Karen, we have to gang up on Sarah. <laughs> I can just, I can just ban, ban you guys. Like, like Maggie. She can boot me time. out of here any second. Yeah. Put, put you in time out. Oh my God. <laughs> okay guys with that we will head off thank you all for watching it's been fun see you on wednesday